Great. So I'm sure there's going to be more people coming in. And um, so we are kind of rounding our, our last Zoom training. Um, we've been on this theme of outreach. Uh, and so hopefully that's something you wish you were better at, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> um, but uh, before we do that, I wanted to kind of uh, think about, um, you know, I think outreach can obviously like get us, make us feel very intimidated or like Cindy, it's like, oh, public speaking, you know, it's like, oh, it's like public speaking. Um, but but I want to just kind of start first with like God's grace and God's goodness and 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 recognize like you know, any of the things that we do, you know, for God should really just kind of emanate from that first and from that sense of like, you know, being grounded in um, the love and the grace uh, of our Lord. So, um, so this song is a song we actually sang last week um, when we were uh, in person. Um, we actually used it for our reflection in our leadership meeting this week. Um, and so as you're listening to the song, um, just ask yourself, you know, where did you see the goodness of God this past week? You know, just to make it really like, you know, not like all my life is like part of the the lyrics, but maybe you just say, how about just this week? <laughs> like, where do you see the goodness of God this week? And if you want, like, look at your calendar, you'll know, look at your phone. And because I, I need to do that sometimes is just to look at and say, hey, look what happened during this week. And then just kind of just think like, OK, there are things where I've seen God's goodness and God's faithfulness in my life this week that I want to just acknowledge and, and recognize and uh, give thanks and praise to God. So so think about that as we're listening. You can sing along. Uh, where have we seen, or where have you seen God's goodness this week? Seeing the goodness of God. Or you can put it in the chat as well. I think it's just important for us to acknowledge and um, yeah, where you've seen the goodness of God this week. For me, think, just, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, just being in Seattle um, at my parents' house where I grew up, I just felt like, oh, it's that place where God found me originally. And so just so sweet to be there and remember and be grateful. Anyone else? I'm grateful for my cousins. Uh, I was at Smart and Final buying some ice this morning and I ran to my cousin, Mary Lou, I haven't seen in at least a year or so. And it was just really cool to see her and chat for a little bit and catch up in the parking lot. And so I'm really, really thankful for my extended family and my cousins and stuff. So thank you, Lord. Amen. Go ahead, Karen. Yeah, I'm just grateful that, um, that God gave my sister and I the strength you know, to take care of my mom and to keep our, our vow to keep her in the house, you know, and there was times when it got rough and we didn't think we could do it anymore and that we were going to put her someplace, but it's just something we didn't want to do. And he gave us the strength to do that. And we were able to be with her when she passed away. So I'm grateful to God for that strength. Amen. Thanks, Karen. Amen. Yeah, I'm thankful uh, this week. A few people have mentioned uh, a blessing uh, and sometimes I think it's hard for me to accept a blessing from God. Uh, and so I just, um, yeah, accepting, taking, um, taking it and accepting that blessing. Thanks, David. I'm thankful for the people um, that I met this week uh, at different places. And it certainly helped me uh, fill up that circle for the homework. That's yeah, awesome, you're Helen. You're not supposed to do the homework until we ask you to. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He's messing with you, Helen. You did good. All right, A plus for her. Lord, we thank you for the many ways that you have shown us your goodness. And um, we thank you for this chance to be able to give that back and, and acknowledge um, your goodness and graciousness um, to our lives. So um, 
yeah, just help us to, to just remember that and hold that as we, as we talk about, you know, getting better at, at outreach and, and reaching out and praying for, for those um, who still uh, uh, are not following you. And we thank you and pray this in your name. Amen. All right. So one of the ways that we're wanting to also kind of enter in and, and kind of rounding out our evangelism training is just to kind of remember, like, um, there's ways of us just being encouraged by scripture as well. And so we're going to actually do a particular uh, reading of scripture and Molly is going to kind of help lead us in, in that, um, that reading of scripture. Great. Yeah. So what we're going to do a lot of times when we um, read scripture, you know, we're just trying to understand it and it can be a little bit just trying to figure out what's going on or just information, but we're going to do a little different reading of scripture. And this is something that's done throughout history has been done throughout history, the style of scripture reading. Um, it was started by a man named uh, Ignatius of Loyola who lived, um, I think you said, Jesse, it was the 1500s. Yeah about in the 1500s so just he's one of the the saints now in the catholic church really amazing man of god and um it's the idea of finding yourself in the story and so being able to actually put yourself in the story and think of the different characters imagine yourself as one of those characters so it's uh it's a little bit more putting yourself in the scene directly the way that they call it uh, or the way that it was phrased was the idea of meeting god in story so what we're going to do is we're going to actually reflect on this question as we're reading the scripture. So let me read the question. So what is going through your head as one of the friends carrying your paralytic friend to Jesus? So you're going to see in the story that there's a group of friends that are carrying a paralytic, their friend who is a paralytic to Jesus. And imagine yourself as one of those friends that's like physically carrying um, this paralytic friend to Jesus. What would that feel like? Um, what would the scene look like? Um, just try and imagine it. Use your imagination and really put yourself in the story as I read it slowly. Let me read it for us. Luke 5, 17 through 26. One day while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem were sitting nearby. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then, some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a stretcher. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down on the stretcher through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven you. So just take a minute as you heard that, and we'll have it on the screen. Oh, I'm going to keep going. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questionings, he answered them, why do you raise such questions your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you? or to say, stand up and walk, but so that you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the one who is paralyzed, I say to you, stand up and take your stretcher and go to your home. Immediately he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on and went home glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them and they all glorified God and were filled with fear saying, we have seen incredible things today. Amen. So like I was saying, I'm just going to give you a minute just to kind of reflect back on the story. Imagine you can imagine carrying your paralyzed friend to Jesus. What might you be feeling physically? What might you be feeling emotionally? What might the scene look like? Just imagine that. Close your eyes and then think about when the, your friend is actually healed and you see him standing up and glorifying God and being seized with amazement yourself. What would that feel like? So just take a minute to sit still and just reflect on the scripture.
So as we come back together, how anything come up for people as they're imagining themselves as one of the stretcher bearers, really, for their paralytic friend? I know this might be a new, new way of doing, thinking about engaging scripture, but go ahead, Molly. Yeah, I was just thinking about, um, I don't know why, I was just picturing them really sweaty because it's just hot, you know, and they're, they're carrying their friend and that's hard work. And I, I felt the emotions of like anticipation, like what's going to happen, maybe nervousness. And then the like, oh, there's too many people kind of thing. It's like, what are we going to do? And then, then like the physical, what that would have taken to get him up and then lower him down and like, oh my gosh, is it going to fall? And I don't know. Like, I mean, it was like such a journey just to get him before Jesus. And then what that would feel like to see him jumping up. I imagine as a friend, I would feel like I got healed. <laughs> like there's something that his joy is my joy at that point. We are so fully in it together. It would be like, I would, I would have that level of joy. It's like, oh my gosh, it's almost if like I was the one that was mm. healed, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anything else? Like, I mean, you can put in the chat too if you want. I don't, well, I don't, not sure if I understand how we're supposed to answer this question, but for me, it's like, I'm amazed by the faith of those friends. And I wish I had that kind of faith. And honestly, I, I can say I don't, you know, and um, whenever I experience that kind of faith, like seeing friends that I know that pray and um, just like right there on the spot, you know, that's just, to me, that's amazing. So that's what I'm amazed by that faith that they had and wanting to have that kind of faith what did that feel like so. yeah and sometimes it's karen i think your honesty is good because it sometimes it shows us like how it's like hard for us sometimes maybe to relate because i had that feeling too of you know i'm a guy who would rather have someone cut in line and i just don't say anything like because i that's the like that's just my i'm non-confrontational but to think about those guys pushing their way, tearing a stranger's uh, neighbor, you know, like roof apart so they could lower this guy. Like that's like way out of my comfort zone of like, you know, I, I respect people's space. I'd rather them like cut in front of me, in front of Ralph's, like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, so like, I, I did kind of feel that same way. of like, wow, what really motivated them to, to just push through, right? You know, on behalf of their, of their paralytic friend. So yeah, I mean that's your answer to the question, right? You're try, you try to relate, but you're like, I don't know if I can relate because they had so much more faith, right? Anything else? Well, if I, I am not... one of the people who carry the stretcher, I have to have faith. I have to have a strong trust that Jesus can heal then I'll find all ways to get to him to prove that he is, you know, the one that can be healed, you know. So that's, yeah. that's how I feel. Yeah. You will find all way. You know that he can heal and you'll find all way to get to him. Right. Great. Thanks, Cindy. Hel Helen, you also were... were you um, I was would be just happy to follow through, but to also have that team of people with me as we go through the process. Yes, I uh, do believe, but I want others with me. I don't know if I would step out and do it myself. Mm. Well, it might be hard to carry <laughs> on your back <laughs> by yourself and then up, then up, a, up a house and then try to well, I imagine more if I had to do it myself, I would say, excuse me, and push my way forward. But go. to be able to do it with a team. Uh, yes, I, I like that. I, I like believe that yeah, it's strong enough or not, I'm going to do it with them. Mm -hmm. That's great. Eleanor? Uh, sometimes I just go along with what the majority of my friends want to do, or at least my, my younger self would have done that. And I would 
me saying, you guys are crazy. We shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be doing this. But then at the end, when we see our friend getting up and walking, it would be like, oh, that was totally worth it. And, uh, but I, I mean, I, I, I know that I would be kind of the, no, 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 we shouldn't do that, but do it anyway. And then I'll be really happy at the end. That's very Eleanor. See, that wasn't so hard, right? A little new way of approaching scripture. So I was gonna say that. I mean, I think it's helpful because we always we know these stories and so we know how they end, you know. So then it's like, oh, what a great story. But you know, those friends didn't know how it was gonna end and what that would have been like, you know, to have to go through all of that. And like Eleanor said, like, ah, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, but then I think I agree with Helen that maybe by yourself one person's faith wouldn't have been enough but joining with the other ones okay we're all gonna have faith together that's giving me courage to keep pressing in so anyways i'm feeling the tension of it more than just like oh i know where the ending's going it's like oh it took a lot for them to push through all that no. yeah no that's great i think that um we have done we've done a nation reading together as a community so there we go um yeah, so, and I think that just to um, kind of move us into the next piece where we're really wanting to look at the, the two plus prayer card that I was uh, sending out on the email, um, you know, just imagining ourselves like that's the, that's what, uh, that's what Jesus is calling us to do is to be like those, that team of stretcher bearers for, for others um, um, who need Jesus, you know, uh, and then having that kind of faith to, you know, hey, maybe we're not ready to like break through someone's roof yet, but you know, we're willing to like start, you know, maybe taking that, putting them on the, the stretcher or the mat or whatever. Um, so, um, so there's, uh, this is stuff that we've talked about in previous trainings, but um, really talking about the five thresholds and um, that's on that two plus pair card. But uh, just as a refresher, um, I thought it'd be good for us just to watch the video again to kind of like help us remember um, just those those five thresholds. Because for me, it's helpful to have sort of ways. I mean, it's not to like pigeonhole people, but it is a way of talking about, you know, how we progress on the journey of faith and, and, and how we become followers of Jesus. So um, so we're going to watch the video and then we're going to do go into our breakout groups or uh, where we're going to share how we see our own journey uh, reflected in the five thresholds. Okay, so we're gonna watch that first um, as kind of the framework for uh, thinking about outreach and thinking about as we're praying and, and reaching out to um, either our friends and family or like even what we've been doing in the park uh, at the Parks and Rec activities. Taking those five thresholds, taking those five thresholds we're gonna go into our breakout groups and then just talk about ourselves. Like how have we seen ourselves moving from one of those thresholds to the next threshold. So we're not saying you have to have, you don't have to share about like going through all five, but maybe it's just from one to, you know, from one threshold to the next one. Okay. So we'll give you about uh, seven minutes. Okay. Can you select to make that change? Okay. Seven minutes. Here we go. Sorry, I couldn't hear some more in our group. <laughs> so. You need more time, Jesse? No, it's fine. It's we can we can move on. So, so uh, let's. Um, not that I didn't want to hear from Bonnie or Musa. I just want to <laughs> watch. You can, you can share next time, next breakout. So uh, we are going to put into the chat the um, the the car the the link to the PDF uh, if you didn't already download it. Um, or print it out like I'm still old school I I'm very like I need to write things down like not not just do things online so um if you want to uh print it out now or, or like if you, have, you need to get a pen go ahead and do that um this will be boring for Helen because she already did her homework so but <laughs> so uh but you can definitely just click on this and it's a fillable pdf so you should be able to just 
be able to fill it out. So what we're gonna do is just give you about 10 minutes. Um, and actually like if you're done, you can put in the chat that you're done. Okay, so that we can kind of keep track. There's not a lot of us. So um, I think we should be able to just put in, you know, when you're done, we're just gonna put some music on uh, just to help you have some time uh, to just walk through the different steps. And I will just show real quick. Um, You know, just taking, thinking about the prayer map, you know, writing, and, you know, how are we connected? Like, who are the people that Jesus has put in our lives at this stage in our lives? Um, and really listening, you know, who are two? This is like, this, this is the two plus, right? So we're really only, we're not looking at like saving your neighborhood or, you know, reaching out to everyone, every one of your coworkers or anything like that. It's like, who are the two people that it, God wants you to focus your time of prayer and energy on and then putting those two names down then assessing using the five thresholds assessing where those two um, uh, friends of yours are at friends or family um, and then putting like a, a little bit of a commitment and, and then putting some next steps into that so it's pretty straightforward and then on the right hand side you can see the five thresholds again to try to help you uh, think through um, where they may be at Okay, so we're going to take about 10 minutes. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, those of you who are watching the video, I'm going to pause it yet again. The reason that I'm doing that is because some of the stuff is copyrighted, but we do want you guys to do, do the exercises. So just pause it and then take 10 minutes and do the exercise and then press play again. All right. Everyone have it? Okay, we're good. All right. Wow, everyone needed more time. I know we needed more time too, but. <laughs> um, yeah, anything that came up from the groups that we feel like would be beneficial um, for, for the whole group, just as we process. Um, yeah, Jesse, there was one thing that came up in our group just at the tail end, in fact. Um, we were talking about someone who was a friend of ours that was curious who in fact was going to Catholic church, but maybe not as consistently or not as faithfully perhaps, um, but they were going through a major struggle in their life. And we were talking about how our stories, because all of us have stories about struggle or loss. If we're able to share with our friends, maybe when they are curious and asking us, how did you do it? when that happened to you, then, you know, there's another, you can help the curious and um, by sharing your own story, because we all have stories that, of um, trouble in our lives. I mean, we're all human beings. We don't have a straight road. And if you share that, that, yeah, I, I did, this happened to me, but I was able to pull through because, and maybe that'll also work for you. And, so by sharing those things, maybe we can help others as well. Yeah, yeah and I think that connects a lot with, um, what was her name, Julie Lapido? Is it Julie? Uh, and Jamie. Jamie. Jamie, I'm sorry, I knew it was a J. So yeah, Carlos, and that fits perfectly with you if some of us remember that training where she was talking about like, yeah, relate it to like, you know, part of it is like relating it like, yeah, I had struggles, but then, you know, this is how I felt God got to address that or, or help me through that so um so i think that's that's authentic right it's it's not like just pulling out some concept and trying to apply it but it's 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 been incarnated like and worked through our actual experiences so that's great uh anything else i was just gonna share i think when i was doing the reflection and then was sharing with my group the, um, I just felt like the Lord was inviting me to, from my, my mom, who's definitely not a Christian, my dad, who is, but he's struggling to actually follow Jesus. Um, and I just felt like, like, how do I pray for them, God? And that sense of um, out of your great love for them, like pray for them out of your great love then, and then like laying down your life for your friends and just realizing is relating it back to the passage, how much that the journey of faith requires somebody laying down their life 
in order for, you know, like, I just felt like, oh, I need to lay down my life in prayer for my family and pray out of that kind of desperation out of my love for them. And, and it's not just like a one week kind of thing. It really is for my mom to come to faith. I mean, yeah. And my next step felt like, oh, starting to meet with her and just doing some coaching related to her growth and how that could open her up to more of God potentially. But I just realized it requires sacrifice on some level and time and my heart. And so just, just struck by just that part of it in the story. So, yeah. And then a couple of people in our group just were sharing how somehow inviting them into Christian community can in a non-threatening kind of space can feel easier for them. So, um, you know, Cindy was remembering like the Trinity, like there'd be like women's, you know, hangouts or things like that. Like those spaces are helpful or it's harder to invite people to online things. And so like even the women's crafting or, so we were just brainstorming like, oh yeah, what are opportunities for that? Or just taking note, like, oh, those things can be helpful for people. It's like, how do we create non-threatening spaces where we can just hang out in Christian community and people can get invited and things like that, so. Yeah, what are sort of third spaces that, that people can not feel like, you know, I'm not going to church, it's not your home or your church, but like some other place that neutral, that's for people to connect um, or a hobby, you know, that people connect to. So, yeah, but I think just to kind of wrap it up, I think really having that sense of, yeah, you know, just like those, those friends who are burying their friends, you know, um, and, and I think that that team, like that Helen that mentioned too, is really important. And I think that's one of the reasons why we've been doing these outreaches at the park uh, during the movie nights. It's we get to do it as a team. And, uh, you know, even last, uh, if you saw on Facebook, like we recorded like Molly, like giving you a full on pitch for <laughs> River of Life, like because you're doing the little the, the raffles. Do you want to yeah. watch it? Yeah, let's watch it. But I mean, this is not to say like this is what we all need to strive towards you know public speaking like molly is very used to an evangelism but no this one's but, cool though I, but I this was really but, impressed <laughs> but i like yeah i, I really um I, I thought it was really yeah i thought i thought we did well you can just watch it <laughs> there we go so um we'll see and actually what's really cool is uh, i was just reflecting on this exercise and this is a this is a way when we ask people like if they're connected to church or they're interested like this is a way where you can really see where people are on their threshold some people are like oh no i like i don't want but surprisingly like there's actually people who are very open and we're like oh you guys you know like yeah we've actually been thinking about it or whatever so um so it's just another opportunity to be able to do it as a team uh, i i was sharing in my group like how sometimes my circles are very limited in terms of like actual people i have regular contact with who are not not christians or um so uh so sometimes like having like this outlet is really important for us in terms of just taking that little that next step and connecting so um so hopefully yeah and hopefully this just kind of spurs us to remember and to, to pray, uh, to commit to, to praying and, um, and, and maybe asking the Lord, like, you know, yeah, how, uh, is there an extra step uh, of, of sacrificial help, you know, that I can give like those um, stretcher bearer friends um, for the paralytic that I can be this week or, or for the weeks to come uh, with, for the two people that we wrote down. Um, so we're just going to kind of wrap it up with a uh, just a closing song. Uh, Johnny played it a couple of weeks ago. I think it's still really relevant as we close out our time of, of thinking about evangelism and, and you know, training for, for outreach and evangelism. Um, and it's called Send Me. And then afterwards, we'll have Johnny kind of just pray a prayer of commission for us uh, before we move into announcements. Lord, there's so many, <clears throat> Lord, there are so many ways that this message can get lost or <clears throat> foggy, distorted. Lord, so many distractions, so many reasons we can tell ourselves. Um, you know, I want to, I want to share the good news. I want to follow Christ, but I don't want to be weird about it or crazy or 
we tell ourselves things, Lord, but I pray that 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 theme would pour through in everything we do, Lord, that we uh, that we want to not just bring good news, we want to live out to, br- to be good news in our lives to people and by how we we love. And I pray that that love would pour out from a place in our hearts of knowing how much we've been loved. Lord, we love because we first have been loved by you. I just pray that 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 reality would be so strong in our lives every day. And when we wake up, we wouldn't have to to psych ourselves up, to try to pump ourselves up and say, all right, I want to go out and love people for Jesus. But we would just be so full of the awareness of how much we're loved. How much you love us, Lord. And how much you love the people that we are going to encounter, whether we know them or not. Um, Lord, we love because we've first been loved. And your love for us is so great. And you love us even when we forget. And you love us even when we mess up and we sin. Lord, you love us when we turn our backs on you. You love us when we're too distracted to, to see you or to hear you. Lord, you love us when we are uh, when we are not bold, when we're fearful. Lord, you love us when we're in dark places. Lord, you love us when we think you've forgotten about us. And you never do because your hand of love is always on us, Lord. So, Lord, yeah, we Lord, send us out with that constant remembering of how much we've been loved and that your love would just pour out through us, Lord. And thank you for what you are teaching us and help us to, uh, help us to see you and what you're doing in our lives and the lives of those around us. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's just take a few more minutes. Um, thanks for hanging for us for just a few more announcements. Uh, our first announcement is that today is July 31st, so we are <laughs> starting a new month. Um, after some discussion, we were like, okay, we're, we're still going to kind of keep the, the format of first and third Sundays um, in person. And uh, next week, uh, we'll be, um, we will have communion and our meal. It'll be the first week that we start life groups again. Um, and we're also going to do a promotion Sunday. This is something that Tammy was uh, asking that we just recognize uh, all the kids who are moving up um, into whatever grade or uh, um, that they're going to be in. It's just acknowledging them. So we're going to have a little time of just recognizing them, praying for, for them um, at our promotions uh, uh, or next Sunday um, at the service club. Uh, next, and so like what we mentioned, so that will also kick off our life groups. We're back to Acts, so we're going to be doing the same format we did before the summer, where we're we're preaching on Acts, but then um, during the week we'll be hitting the next passage uh, in in Acts, and we're going to be finishing Acts this year. Woo! <laughs> I know, twenty eight chapters. It takes a long time. <laughs> so, um, and so we'll have life groups. It'll be the pretty much the same format as we've had before Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday nights, and then Sunday before uh, service, um, we might try to just do other adjustments later. But for now, that's going to be the case. Um, for those who are going to the barbecue, we just want to remember that um, uh, remember what you're going to bring. Uh, Abraham and Lindsay cannot make it. So if you want to bring beans instead, that's what they signed up for. <laughs> uh, so I don't know, Grace. Uh, uh, Grace, if you and Brandon need a break from your d- dusting, then you know feel free to come out. It's over at the on the other side, of, the east side of Barney Park. But it, you know it's cool. So thank you, Carlos. Uh, you're gonna refrigerate. The east your... side's cool. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put a, a you put a refrigerating unit right for outside. So we totally keep it cool. For... <laughs> Do you need us to bring chairs? There's We're no humidity wondering. here whatsoever. Do you want us to bring any chairs or anything? Uh, uh, I think I have about 30 chairs. Oh, okay. We're good then. So, so I think we're good. Okay. But yeah, yeah, anybody who wants to come, just come. Don't worry about it. Just come. Yeah. Even if you don't have time. I know some of us are busy and we can't prepare anything, whatever. Just come. All right. <laughs> and then also on that first Sunday, next Sunday, uh, Amy and Anthony would really appreciate any help uh, to help them to move. 
they're moving some of the like the smaller stuff but it's really kind of like the bigger stuff so if you've been working out like i have then you know please show <laughs> show up to, to help it'll be our after service we'll eat lunch and then um then head out to help them move from monterey park to whittier and then uh we are still working out all the details so we will get it out by next week week um we're excited about this first kind of church retreat we can do uh and but we just want to try to get all the the details down um so that we can send it to you and uh you know all at once as opposed to piecemeal so uh and then finally thank you for all who are giving um and then so next week there will be no pre-service prayer time and then if you want to stay on for any after service prayer uh you can do so now all right so now we're just gonna um unmute ourselves and say bye to everyone and greet, greet everybody who's here tonight. So. Bye. Bye. Bye, Karen. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.